in the wake of the Great Depression, there were a lot of federal programs to subsidize and enable families to purchase homes. But as part of the access to that program, certain neighborhoods literally had red lines drawn around those, and those tended to be predominantly African-American and Latino neighborhoods. We all know about the East-West divide in Austin that's a long-standing part of our history and has played into a lot of the, the racial economic dynamics that we see. And so what you found is that those families didn't have access to the kinds of resources that would enable them to access affordable home mortgages and buy homes and build assets. And so we see that pervasive system building up to the system that we have today where we see tremendous wealth gaps. What we find is that we really have a bifurcated or divided financial service system. You have the mainstream banks and the credit unions, and then you have the finance companies, the payday lenders, the buy here, pay here auto dealers. And once a family gets trapped into that alternative financial sector, it's very difficult to move into the the prime or the mainstream financial system. If you wanna buy a car, you have to pay 20% interest, not one and a half percent interest. If you need access to emergency money, it's at 500% interest for a payday loan. If, if you wanna buy a house, people end up in these very creative owner financed or, or other kinds of, kinds of loans that in some circumstances can be helpful, but in too many circumstances end up having abusive components and people end up losing a lot of the equity that they invested in those resources. And so they're trapped in a system that almost keeps our poor families and struggling families poor. 52% of Austinites do not have at least $2,000 worth of savings to sustain them for three months at the poverty level. Yvette Ruiz is with J.P. Morgan Chase, who funded a study on the racial wealth divide in Austin. It was conducted by the nonprofit out of Washington, D.C., Prosperity Now, and Austin Community Foundation. In terms of how, how we're doing with the racial wealth divide in comparison to other cities, I would say we're definitely in the top percentage of, of, of highly unequal cities. We're not talking about wealthy, we're talking about wealth. We're talking about access to, to, to capital to help families be comfortable so that when their child gets sick or if they get sick, they don't go bankrupt. Vulnerable communities, vulnerable families don't go to predatory lenders because they want to buy a flat screen TV. They go because there's a gap in their finances. If you look at where finance companies and payday lenders are located as compared to banks and credit unions, there are pretty clear patterns of where those businesses are located and they tend to be highly correlated to the high concentrations of, of Latino and African American families and lower income families. We have a really wonderful partnership with a collaborative of organizations. Um, one of them is based here in Austin, BCL of Texas. BCL stands for Business Community Lending of Texas. And they have identified a small dollar loan alternative. So the Community Loan Center is an employee-based loan program. It's where we offer a small dollar loan amount of $1,000 and we provide a lower interest rate. Our renewal period is a 12-month period, and it's going through payroll deductions or electronic bank transfers from their bank account, where they're able to pay it back regularly and pay it back over the course of 12 months versus having to come up with $1,000 in two weeks. We know that the consumer loan program that we offer would be a great component to really help combat the predatory lending that's going on right now in Austin. But Austin was the second city in Texas to adopt the Unified Payday and Auto Title Lending Ordinance. They put some basic framework of protection into place. And what we've seen is it's been pretty meaningful. From the peak of, of fees charged 
In, in Austin, families have saved more than $20 million. This report kind of paints a very clear picture of a lived experience. Austin is doing great from an economic development perspective. But this report also shows that a rising tide does not raise all boats. This prosperity that we have come into is not equal. Um, and that is a new story that's unique to the country because not everyone is seeing this prosperity the way Austin is seeing it.